The fight for a new voters register is taking to the streets as scores of pro-MPP protesters marched to petition the Electoral Commission. But the protests turned violent as the police clashed with members of the Let My Vote Count Alliance suspected to be deviating from the approved route. Leading member of the MPP, Gabi Ochiridako, claims to have been assaulted by the police. So where does this lead us? Is this the right approach? And will the protests yield the desired results? of forcing the electric commission to succumb this is today's big story with me stephen enti Planned peaceful protests by the Let My Vote Count Alliance today turned violent because of disagreement over March routes with the protesters strongly opposing a last-minute decision by the police to change the final converging point. Leading member of the position New Patriotic Party was assaulted in the process. Uh, let's now go on to the line and speak to our reporter Kwachi Afrenyama who has been on the beat all day. Uh, Afrenyama, good, good, good evening. Afra, if you can hear me. Right, uh, we're going to get Afre Nyama on the line. So we'll be talking to the political parties to also uh, figure out whether they feel that this approach is right, especially for those who are in favor of a new voters register like the CPP. Let's get onto the telephone lines and speak to convener of AFAG, Nana Ayu Efriye, who is joining us on the telephone lines now. Uh, good evening, sir. Right, uh, we don't have him and... Uh, We'll be getting on to with our discussion. So the key question tonight is whether the approach adopted by the uh, Let My Vote Count Alliance is uh, something that sh we should be supporting. I am going to get onto the telephone lines to speak to uh, the, uh, the NDC and then I'll speak to members of the MPP. Later on, we'll speak to a political science lecturer from the KNUST for uh, some analysis on this. Now, let's get back to the studio. I have here with me uh, in the studio Deputy uh, Communications Director of the CPP, Mr. Yao uh, Tano. Uh, Asani, how are you, sir? I'm doing so good. quickly, I will, we have to go onto the telephone lines. The CPP is in favor of a new voters register, really, but you are not in favor of the processes or approach that uh, some political parties like the MPP are adopting. Yeah, sure. Uh, we would go for any you know move that would seek to bring uh, sanity within the system, especially mm. our political dispensation. But beyond that... Right, uh, let me go on to the phone line before I lose uh, my uh, guest on the telephone line. Sir. Good evening, sir, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, good evening, my brother. Thank you very much uh, for making time. So uh, this protest today, it, it, it does happen that it turned violent with police clashing with some of the protesters who were suspected to be deviating from the approved route. Uh, what feedback... Have you received from uh, some of your members who took part in the protest? Yeah, my, I'm, I'm, yes, a very good evening to your cherished listeners. Yeah, um, we, we, we embarked on a peaceful protest. And um, uh, unfortunately, it was mad. Uh, and I will put the place squarely at the doorstep of the police service. Uh, over 15,000 persons. Uh, you have the leaders in front, me, Dr. Free, uh, the chairman of Alpha, part of the leadership. And you have a few hundreds of people using unapproved routes. And the police give them escort on that route. And they turn around to attack them on the route. And you have the leaders uh, standing over there with the Rusia Tinga. And uh, we left her, rushed to the scene, uh, several, uh, several minutes away from us. And when we go there, we were either beaten or arrested. Uh, for now, some of our people who patronized the protest uh, in the CID uh, department uh, arrested and others are in the hospital, uh, at the military hospital and rich hospital. Right, interesting. Let me get a better understanding of the clarity you're providing. You are telling us that uh, out of the number of protesters, only a handful 
appear to have deviated. And so the police went in to escort them to bring them back to the approved route. And while... No, uh, no. Mm. you know, you look at uh, over 15,000 people. It's actually a long, a long train of uh, protest on marching. You know, and you have those at the tail end. And uh, probably several minutes walk where the lady leaders are. Probably, let's say, about 20 minutes walk where the mm. leaders are. Mm. And you have the police shepherd in this. It's supposing um, those persons who join along the way, you know, when you are on demonstration, you know, as if you know every person, some of them join along the way, and mm. that is the practice. So when they join, they follow the, the, the train according to where they are passing. Mm. And you have the police also available. So the police, they were away over several towns. And the police actually gave them escort on an unapproved route. My brother. And I want to repeat this. Provided those persons wanted to use a different route, as we are made to understand, why should the police follow them up? They should just tell mm -hmm. them that, my brother, this is not part of the route. You have the police escorting them along that route, and then after they leave, to, they leave them midway, and they see another group of police persons attacking them. That was one of the routes. I see. On the second route where mm -hmm. they... They was the, the rest of them were on the trailer and they're following the trailer. Now, on that route, we realized that, um, and I will be very happy if subsequently you can invite um, a member with the director of communication of the NPD. Mm. We have got this gentleman in red and black who, he, who, who, who is a national security operative. And that gentleman was the one who was directing them that you, they should use this route. And mm. that route was unapproved route. Okay? And I'm telling you, that if you're controlling mob of over, over 15,000 people, and the leaders are way up there, they can't right. know what is going on, mm. way behind. And this gentleman was a first time, but you're my brother, you are an NHS security guy. Why are you behaving like that? Uh, uh, you are on the protest. And you, are, you told them to use the right. In the midst of the challenges, the police pounds on them, and the guy vanished from the scene. So it looks like... Some persons intentionally were made to foment this problem. Right. Uh, by getting some innocent few to use a certain route. And then going see, ahead to create a... Irrespective of... Yeah. Hello? Yeah, I'm listening, sir. Irrespective of this challenge, be it as it may that these guys did not know about the route and that they used their own means to mm. shorten their walking distance. The leaders were willing come and speak to them. Right. Uh, Dr. Freer, we will take your concerns uh, back to the police and we will address this uh, completely. We'll put them to the police and ask key questions about that. But we'll have to end our conversation and uh, we will quickly go on to the other telephone lines. Kwachi Afre Nyama, who is our reporter who has been covering this uh, protest all day, is on the line. Uh, Afre, how are you? Doing great, uh, Stephen. Great. So I know all day you've been holed up at uh, various places. Where are you now? Well, currently I'm the, the uh, police CID headquarters, and uh, I'm sure you know those uh, protesters who were arrested uh, following the conference with the police. Uh, what I'm picking up is that they've been granted bail, mm. and there's been about 34 of them, mainly constituency executives. But of course, one notable, one notable uh, figure among them, uh, convener of APA, David Asante. But again, what I've gathered is that uh, they've been asked to report to the CID headquarters. At and also, what I'm learning from sources uh, from within this coalition, the leadership of this coalition, is that they're already considering holding a similar demonstration next week. And another option they are considering is to hold a, a major press conference uh, tomorrow and afterwards they'll present uh, they'll let a delegation go to the electoral commission to present this petition so we could see another demonstration similar one uh, next week uh, by this group right uh, the coalition backed by the mpp as well right afraid we're grateful uh, for that quick update uh thanks very much uh, kwachi afraid is our reporter on the ground so let me return to you mr uh asini tano uh 
you were saying that the CPP is not really in favor of this this approach, approach yeah. of hitting the streets, protesting when indeed uh, the AFAC, which is the instrument the Electoral Commission will use to discuss all the issues, is yet to meet over the matter. So mm. uh, what's your viewpoint on yes, this? Yes, like I said, we would support this course with regards to changing the, uh, the voters register. But anything beyond that is not part of the convention. What do you mean party. anything beyond that? I mean, uh, if they're protesting, mm -hmm. if they are petitioning the mm -hmm. Electoral Commission, is it not a, a, a good first I step? mean, this type of protest, I mean, hitting the street, is it part of the I mean, dialogue that we should have with uh, IPAC? I don't think it is the, the, the case. We should be able to differentiate between, you know, sitting down rather than walking. Mm -hmm. And indeed, sitting down with the right people, with the right frame of environment, will be the right thing to ensure that there's sanity within the system with regards to mm -hmm. politics. Mm -hmm. But if you hit the street, and like we are saying, the numbers that went out there, and indeed no Convention People's Party member would seek to be part of this uh, particular uh, protest. Although you are in favor yes. of a new yes. voters' register. Yes, resistance. indeed. Anybody who claims to be a member of the Convention People's Party who, you know, take to the street will not be the true encromised. Mm. We believe that we should go and sit with um, IPAC, and then ensure that we, you know, put our cards on the table. Mm. Because if you remember, after the declaration of the uh, results in 2012, uh, where they took it to court, the Convention People's Party was the first party to state categorically that the election was rigged and that the voters' register itself was flawed. Yes. But, I mean, we became a, a, a radical to the media circles, thinking that if you think that is the case, why haven't you taken it to court? And, you know... Mm. We knew that we did not win the election. But a particular seat that we lost in Jomoro told us clearly that people were biased across the borders to come and, you know, vote, for which reason Samia lost. Otherwise, there was no way. And it right. was through the machination of the mm. NDC. Right, so uh, quickly, I mean, I'll wrap up with you. Uh, what do you want the MPP and the other groups which are pushing for a new voters' register to do instead of a protest? Yes, um, I don't think I, IPAC has said that they will not sit I mean, we should, the electoral com uh, commissioner has been notified already, the, that outfit has been mm -hmm. notified. So it is incumbent on all the parties to come together and then sit uh, at the IPAC meeting, which comes off just about uh, you know, a week or, so. A week or mm -hmm. so, so that we find an amicable solution to this situation. We know of countries that have suffered, I mean, right. with regards to war mm. and other things. And we don't have to let that happen in this right. country. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid uh, I need to go back onto the telephone. I'm grateful for your time, though, uh, on today's big story. Uh, on the line, I have uh, uh, Fred Agbenyo, who is the Deputy Communications Director of the ruling NDC. He's joining us. Uh, Ms. Agbenyo, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, my brother. Good. I, I know that uh, the NDC is strong on its position that there is no need for a voter's register. But I want to find out from you, I mean, as a, as a political institution, I'm sure because you, you are open to people sharing their views and expressing themselves, you would have little to say about anyone who is pushing for a new voter's register. Do you think the push is, is, is out of place? Well, I think that is for all of us, and I think that every Ghanaian has a right to express his democratic rights on every issue uh, that concerns him. If some group of people within the country think that for any reason the reason that we have today is not good, uh, we have uh, one person who is supposed to appeal to another election commission. So I don't have a difficulty with anybody taking a position that could change the register. What we need to rather do is look at the issues or the concerns that are being raised and see if those who are calling for the change of the register as a legitimate case for which you can a register, or those who think that what you have now is the best, let's maintain it, is to do as good as you move on as a people, then we look at it. So mm. everybody has a right, really. To Hello? Yeah, I can hear you, sir. I can hear you, sir. Yes, so that's the point I'm making, that uh, nobody can stop anybody from making or expressing a view on a particular mm, subject. Mm. MPP can express their view they want to express, then it's can express our view. But at the end of the day, we should want to sit around a, a table and say that, okay, uh, we have listened to your side of the argument, we have listened to other side of the argument, we think that this is what to be in the interest of Ghana, and that's what we want to go with. And end there. Uh, Ms. Agbenyo, we're grateful uh, for your time. I will, I will be coming to you now and then to get your views on the development of this, especially as you are also, your party is also part of the IPAC 
uh, deliberations which are expected to converge and discuss this issue. But uh, let's move to some other aspects of this. Uh, today, the police converged at the Electoral Commission offices uh, to protect the police against uh, protesters who were going there. We sent our reporter, Matilda Vemega, there also. Uh, Matilda, how are you? Okay. Were you not whipped with a uh, horse uh, whip or anything? Not at all. With oh. my experience with the police. <laughs> yeah, you kept your distance. No, I didn't keep my distance today. I, in fact, I approached them when I got to the place because mm. I realized that uh, we're supposed to go through, you know, uh, the EC office. We're supposed to drive through that side mm. and then park for me to go inside mm. and then speak to uh, Parry and also speak to other people to them. But when we got there, we realized that the, the police had mounted a barricade yeah. at the, at the, in front of the office, uh, in front and then behind it. So even mm. if you, you go through this, uh, the first side and you are blocked, the other side to you it's have the same. is the same. So mm -hmm. no one was virtually given access to to go to to the office. So I I approached them and then I introduced myself. I told them this is why I'm here and then I'm following up on the story and all that. So they they advised me that I, my cameraman and myself we we keep our distance because they don't want anyone. Um, moving around the place. Mm. Um, they are not allowing journalists, they are not allowing anyone inside access to the, the, to the main office. Uh, the only people who were allowed in were the, the EC or, um, workers yeah. who, who were already inside. But mm. I should tell you that a number of people there at, at that particular time didn't know exactly what was happening. So uh, we tried uh, to speak with them and then they didn't know. So we had to take the time to educate them to tell them uh, they shouldn't fear they shouldn't panic because if you see the armored cars there mm. and then the water cannons there it tells that uh, the station could get serious yeah but you didn't see any of the protesters trying to not at all uh, it looked like try to push through suddenly it security looked, barriers no, no it looked like all. suddenly the protesters had fled because we didn't see them we mm. didn't see them there was no trace maybe they were them. sticking to the approved route rather than unapproved route i mean i needed to find out from you whether when you went there earlier you saw signs of maybe some of the protesters no. lingering around we, we, we didn't see any all. any mm. of them at all within that area and all it was the stretch was from the uh, um, holy trinity cathedral mm. down to mm. the, the ridge runabout mm. you'd see the police mountain barricade from that stretch to the runabout. So there wasn't really access for uh, people to, to gain, uh, to, to, to go, go into, in there. into the mm. Electoral Commission So office. nobody, no official from the Electoral Commission spoke to you. Not at and all. And the police didn't speak to you on the, the record. The, the police didn't granted, speak to me on the record. interview subsequently. They, they uh, didn't to, grant the interview, but what we had behind the scenes was that um, there's been, you know, there's been a number of arrests and all that. Mm. Uh, as we speak now, I'm told that they are meeting. So it's after the meeting that we'll brief everyone about what exactly took place because there's been a lot of uh, uh, misreports and that is what they are saying about this whole uh, demonstration right. so after the briefing that is when they would grant us the, the interview so I'm sure by seven o'clock right. prime they would speak right. with us. Okay Matilda uh, we're grateful for uh, coming on to the show but we're, we're told that we managed to catch uh, Superintendent Sefas Arthur in an interview uh, in which he addressed some of the security concerns and then also we are joined on the telephone lines by uh, Dr. Edward Brenya who is a senior fellow at the Ghana Institute of Governance and Security. Good evening sir and thanks for your time. Good evening. Great so uh, here we are we are at a crossroad really with uh, uh, Let My Vote Count Alliance and Pro MPP group pushing for a new voters register, but they, they actually want to do that by petitioning the Electoral Commission through a protest. Do you feel that this approach is, is right, especially considering that the IPAC meeting, which uh, has been scheduled by the Electoral Commission, is yet to come off? Yes, um, I barely can hear you. The uh, speaker is a little bit, uh, I mm -hmm. mean, the mic is a little bit far away, so right. I couldn't pick on exactly everything. If you can get it closer and repeat what you said. Right, uh, let me... Let me speak a bit clearer now and see if you can hear me. I'm saying that uh, the protest by the Let My Vote Count Alliance and other mm -hmm. pro-opposition uh, groups today was to petition the Electoral Commission towards getting a new voters register. I'm asking you if, in your view as a political analyst, you feel that the approach is right 
or that these groups should have waited for the electoral commission through its IPAC meetings to discuss uh, the matter? Yes, um, let me first of all use the opportunity to um, extend my greetings to your able listeners. Mm. And on the subject matter, I think that we have to recognize that we are in a democracy where um, individuals, interest groups and others have the right to express their concerns mm. on issues. Um, therefore, um, the fact that they decided to go on a demonstration, I wouldn't say that it was wrong because that was a channel that is used to express or to voice out their um, grievances. However, given the fact that the Electoral Commission has scheduled um, a meeting of iPad in um, next week, but I think that it was unfortunate that this group could have waited and see the outcome. Mm. Or even if they had gone on demonstration and uh, peacefully presented a petition, which, of course, they want to be part of the discussion on iPad mm. next week, then we would have said that it was okay. But when this demonstration turned into something that a lot of people mm. are injured and they're going to um, hospital for the clash with the police, I think it became an unfortunate issue. Mm. And therefore, we have to look at the limit of democracy and the freedoms that we enjoy. Now, the, 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 the leaders of the group are actually accusing the police of uh, scheming to uh, get some of their members uh, caught up in a situation which appeared like uh, they were more like uh, deviating from the approved route. They say that actually the police officers escorted their members to through that route only to get to a point where another uh, police team said no that was not the route and they were they were they were attacked so actually the the, the protest was meant to be peaceful but it just ended up not being peaceful so uh, what should 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 the police be doing about this do you think that the police need to come out and clear his image about such allegations against the institution Yes, you're right. I think the police in this case need to come out and clear, make clear what has already happened. Because what I know is that every time you're going on a demonstration, you seek for permits, and the police are supposed to be an escort. So if, it will be an unfortunate situation if actually one set of police were escorting the group and another set comes in to uh, say that they were on the wrong route, which would be unfortunate because ideally, they, the police are the ones who are supposed to grant permission from all the rights that these people will be doing. And so for that matter, mm. I think the police need to let us know exactly what happened so that uh, as Ghanaians we will, will know where to place the blame. Right. So let's, make, let's shift a little from the protest. I know that the underlying reason for the protest uh, is the, the push for a new voters register. What's your view on Ghana requiring a new voters register as is being uh, mooted by the N NPP? I think the Electoral Commission, in the light of the meeting, the Electoral Commission made it very clear that if any political party has clear issues of concern with evidence that they should present it to the Electoral Commission, then the Electoral Commission will make a fair assessment of whatever um, issues, evidence are brought before it. And if they see it um, uh, expedient or they find it viable to put in place a new voters register, then they will do that. My guess is that if indeed the MPP is calling for a new voters register based on evidence, then the MPP by now might have presented to the Electoral Commission and the Electoral Commission is examining it and these issues will be discussed at the next at one meeting. Mm. So it is somehow I don't want to believe the fact that as we want to agree that let our vote count is a pro even though we know that a pro MPP I don't believe that is NDPP leadership that is doing that. No. Uh, pushing them to go on and the demonstration. If indeed it is the MPP that is doing that, then it should be unfortunate because it will amount to ignoring the channel of negotiation that the Electoral Commission has made available right. and rather using other means to push the Electoral Commission to do something against the world because it said bring your evidence, we examine it, if it is worth it, we would uh, take action. So why doesn't the NPP do that instead of uh, resorting to demonstration and other things that I don't think is in the interest of the country at this time? Right, uh, Dr. Brenya, we are grateful for your time on today's Big Story. Dr. Brenya is a senior fellow at the Ghana Institute of Governance and Security. So uh, earlier we 
caught up with uh, uh, Superintendent Sefa Zatha, who is with the Public Relations Unit of the Ghana Police Service. Let's listen to him. Eventually, they set off to their destination, which is Hasu Folk Park, through the approved route that is coming to my avenue, linking up with the Atamil's High Street, and then terminating at the Hasu Folk Park. However, a little distance into their journey, they decided to veer off. Mm -hmm. Onto this particular route that we are standing on. Apparently heading for the EC, much against the order of the court. And police being peace officers and law enforcers, we decided to stop them. And that is what we have been doing up to this point. Right, so pretending service Arthur there with the public relations unit of the Ghana Police Service. I must say that we have been unable to get the police back uh, onto the telephone lines to respond to allegations that have been uh, raised by AFAC, uh, which suggests that actually those people were, were, not veering the, the, were not veering off the route per se, but they were escorted onto that route by a team of police officers. And subsequently, at the point where it was realized that it's an unapproved route, they clashed with another uh, team of police officers. So we'll be following this up uh, further on our subsequent bulletins. My name is Stephen Enti, and enjoy the rest of our programs. Good evening.